But we, we live in a period, uh, I'm afraid, where I imagine everybody here, uh, and I won't speak for too long because I know you were in the conversation. Uh, I suppose everyone here believes in the welfare state, and everybody believes that we've got uh, decent housing. Unfortunately, we're losing the argument. One of the few popular policies this government imposed was a cap on benefits of £26,000, which is £500 a week, which the only reason anybody will get anywhere near that in terms of benefits is because they're being ripped off by, uh, by, by the landlord. That's charging them a, a huge amount. So that was a popular, popular policy, something something we've got to acknowledge and something we've got to counter. And we've kind of got to, re we've got to redefine welfare state and housing to, to win the argument. And somehow we've got to come up with a slogan, I believe, that uh, we're all in this together, completely discredited by, uh, by Cameron and Osborne and the Tories because it was just a mask there to, uh, to cover the inequality. We were never all in it together with this government. But in order to, to actually defend the welfare state and then win the argument for it, We've got, to, we've got to make the case, we've got to make it strong, we know it's about all of us. It's about fairness, it's about social justice, it's about decency, it's about community, it's also about us. The government had a plan, uh, which I think I'll put into action, which is every year taxpayers will get a statement saying where their taxes have gone, what, what they've been spent on. And the government, of course, wants to do this because they want to get people revolting against their, their taxes being spent on them. On the welfare state. So I looked at the figures in the Daily Mail and they kind of backfired almost immediately because the biggest proportion of uh, that welfare budget, that Department of Work and Pensions budget, was actually on pensions. So the Daily Mail said, well, actually, pensions are welfare. Let's take them out because they see it as a dirty word. They, they see it as something, the right sees it as something that just shouldn't, it shouldn't exist. And the you know, heartbreaking tales on housing, uh, you're telling. But we live, we live in an era where the government is just working overtime to come up with ways actually punishing people who are in council housing, housing associations, social housing, coming up with ways of uh, increasing market rents, actually allowing private landlords to do what they like. Um, they will celebrate a shard of glass in London. You may have seen it arising over, over London Bridge, a sort of pointed uh, bit of glass. Penthouses in there are going to sell for £10 million pounds each. And that will be lauded by government ministers. It's absolutely a great triumph and something we should all cheer and be proud of and think it's a magnificent achievement. I just think it's a monument to, to greed, avarice, and a grotesque inequality. But anybody who has <coughs> social housing that's somehow seen as a, as a cost on the state, as somebody who's a bit feckless, we've really got to start winning back the argument and pointing out this isn't the case. But we've got to say the welfare state matters to us all, just as decent housing matters to us, to us all. It, uh, it, it pains me that just listening to a number of people in somewhere like Brighton, which is affluent, who have, have nowhere, nowhere to live. I think we've got to go back to basics. We've always got to go back to Bethage, who was the, the godfather of the, uh, the, the welfare state, and he launched, he launched his war on those five great evils of want, ignorance, disease, squalor, and idleness. Essentially what he meant was a, a poverty, edu uh, poor education, bad health, horrible housing, and unemployment. You've got to make the argument. And actually, as, a, as an economy, as a society, if we're all in it together. We've got to come up with our own slogan. I don't know what it is. It's something we've, we've got to do to defend the welfare state. Because we we'll always just say the welfare state's about him or it's about her. There will always be people with dividing rules. Political parties are very good at this. Particularly, <coughs> they will be able to pick people off and they will say, why should you pay for that person? So we've got, to all, we've got to show it's going to be all included. Now, for some welfare cuts, I actually wouldn't uh, would not object to. I wouldn't uh, object them cutting the unemployment cost if they got everybody back to work. I wouldn't mind them cutting uh, the cost of rents if they screwed the <coughs> bad landlords. I wouldn't mind cutting uh, disability payments if we were stopping people at work getting injured and, uh, and maimed. But like the welfare state as a whole, what we what we in, all, in this room might be somebody who disagrees, might be a mad free marketeer who wants to uh, rule it all back. Well, speak up for it. Don't bite your tongue later on, it'll be quite interesting. Uh, but uh, we know it's what a decent society is all about, the welfare <coughs> state. It's not just about benefit payments, it's not just about housing, it's also about health, it's about education, it's about people having work. So we've got to, we've got to make the case, because unfortunately, at the moment, we're losing the argument. Thank you. <laughs>